What's the true cost of stapling the alien writings of the Hebrew Torah and its carnal deity onto our Christian Bible? Even mainstream pastors are beginning to recognize the problem while using words like unhitch when discussing it. In today's episode, we look at how we got here and why so many denominations are failing. The latest news, history, and analysis from the perspective of the first Christians. Tune into the FBN Worldwide 24 7 radio stream. You've probably heard the phrase, a man who won't believe in God will believe in anything. And when we look at the ease in which a fake plague was sold to the world and the speed at which support for a new world war was generated, the truth of the maxim really hits home. But where did all these atheists come from? How do you go from having an innate instinctive connection with God to being a professor with all the answers who believes in feathered dinosaurs, space aliens, and the missing link? Well, there's plenty of studies and Pew Research polls out there that report on and celebrate the decline in church memberships and mass participation, but almost none of them ask the simple question of why. Well, we here at FBN have been conducting our own polls and doing our own research, and doing it by asking a simple question of atheists. What caused you to turn away from Christianity? And for the second year in a row, almost all of them had an answer that included something they read in the Old Testament. Some were even able to remember the subject matter that caused such a repulsive reaction. And most had to do with the deity of the Old Testament ordering Jews to kill women and children. It's an order given by their deity many times in several books of the Old Testament, a recurring theme to kill women and children. Now, other atheists referred to magic tricks used by Moses or Jacob getting into a wrestling match with the deity of the Jews and winning the contest. The stories just sounded made up, written by psychopaths or a self-worshipping, self-chosen, barbaric tribe. But no matter the specific story they cited as the reason they rejected Christianity, they all had one thing in common. All of the examples they used came from the Old Testament. There was nothing in the New Testament that caused them to reject Christianity. It all came from one place. And it's no coincidence that when you argue with an atheist, they'll always use examples from the Old Testament as weapons to beat you with. And you, as a Christian, are now suddenly put in the position of having to defend the bizarre scribblings of Jews and their deity because it's in your Bible. Think about that. You have to defend murdering women and children while at the same time claiming it's the Word of God and what Jesus would have wanted. Now, wait a minute. This is an impossible position for a Christian to be put in, and the atheist knows it. Now, as Christians, we're instructed to always seek the truth and to hold fast to what is true. Perhaps you have a friend or relative who's an atheist. Ask him what bearing, if any, the Old Testament stories had on his decision. You'll find that what I'm telling you is the truth, but each of us should confirm it on their own. So, now we see what the fundamental cause for the rejection of Christianity is. Now, before I move on, I want to interject a little of my own experiences in dealing with and debating atheists. As you can imagine, as host of First News on FBN, I interact with them mainly on our social media accounts, on Telegram, Gab, BitChute, YouTube, and to a uh, much lesser extent on Twitter and Facebook, and sometimes also in person. Now, in these debates, I let them go full throttle. I never interrupt them. I have years of experience and already know what their arguments and talking points are before they even say them. Before they even make the argument, I already know what's coming. Trust me, I've heard it all. Now, some are better than others, but inevitably, they all bring up something from the Old Testament as their coup de grace, the final cut to defeat Darren the Christian and his God. In fact, one of my favorite things to do is help them make their own argument for them while nodding and apparently nodding in agreement. One verse they frequently use is the command of the Old Testament deity to the Jews to cut off the hand of any woman that touches a man's genitals in a fight. Now again, 
nodding in agreement. And then I add, yeah, he even says to show the woman no pity as her hand is being chopped off. And in response, the atheist will yell, yes, exactly, defend that, it's in your Bible. And in response to them, I elegantly end the debate by simply saying, no, it isn't. In fact, nothing from the Old Testament is in the very first Christian Bible that was compiled in 144 AD. It's the original unedited Christian Bible, and it remains unchanged to this day, containing the Gospel of the Lord and the original ten epistles from Paul the Apostle. And for hundreds of years, it was the only Bible used by millions of the first Christians. The Gospel of the Lord, delivered to Paul by Jesus on the road to Damascus. Now, you may know it as the Revelation, and Paul talks about it in Galatians. Let's read it together. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And of course we find that in Galatians 1.8.9. And the reason that first Christian Bible doesn't contain the Old Testament is the same reason it doesn't contain the Quran or the Hindu or Buddhist Bible either. See, that's somebody else's religion. And none of those reflect the Christian God revealed to us only through Jesus Christ. There's no mystery here. All facts are in the public domain. This was foundational Christian canon for hundreds of years, right up until your Bible was changed at the point of a sword in 325 AD at the Council of Nicaea and the Old Testament was stapled to it. Of course, back then it was called the Torah and it was written in Hebrew. Today, you know it is the Old Testament, written in Old English. And your modern Bible of today was the result of a lot of time and effort by the Judaizers, the people described by Paul as quote-unquote false brethren who pushed perverted false gospels as we read once again in Galatians. You won't find anyone named Jesus in that Old Testament, nor will you find anyone named Yahweh or Yeshua in the New Testament. You see, it's oil and water, or as the pre-Nicene Christians were fond of saying, not my book, not my God, and truer words were never spoken. Now, again, as Christians, we're compelled to seek the truth and hold on to it. And today we want to find out the truth behind why people are driven away from Christianity. Now, we've found part of the reason in the alien Torah Old Testament, but there's much more to it. You see, the mechanisms and tools used by Satan's parasites to keep people away from Christianity and God go far beyond simply perverting the Bible. Now remember, many atheists come from broken homes, have a poor relationship with their father, and have been saturated and bombarded with anti-Christian propaganda their entire lives. Their love of God replaced with a lust for materialism a bottomless void of consumption and quick dopamine hits that can never be filled. Spiritual zombies. And it's all by design. You see, atheists are the easiest people to control. That's why governments love them. They believe everything and nothing at the same time, and they'll do it on command. It's as easy as flicking a light switch. Now, if your church has been pushing the fake plague, the bioweapon injections, and pushing another world war, that's not a church. It's a pizza hut in a suburban strip mall. No different. Remember, you didn't leave them. They left you. If you or someone you know is drifting away from Christianity, I really encourage you to give the real Christianity a chance. Get the first Christian Bible, the Gospel of the Lord, the one that Paul traveled the world to give you. I think you'll find your faith restored, the veil removed from your eyes, and find yourself back on a solid theological foundation. In fact, you might even be able to win over a few atheists back to our side. It's free at theveryfirstbible.org.org. Now, the largest church that still uses that pre-Nicene Bible is the Marcionite Christian Church, but there are others. Imagine if we could get just one generation of kids steeped in the original pre-Nicene faith. I think that's a goal worth achieving.
I think that'll do it for our episode on atheists. Now, I want to jump on some, very quickly, some housekeeping items for our parishioners. The very first Bible has been translated into Brazilian Portuguese and is available for free. Ask your presbyter at your meeting house to get a copy for you or download the ebook for free. I'll have a link in the show notes for that. And with that, the main languages of the Western Hemisphere are now done. Okay, we've got it translated now into English, Spanish, and Brazilian Portuguese. Unless you count Canadian to be a foreign language. Eh? And by the way, the Marcionite Church has made it its mission to provide the very first Bible in every language for free. So we've got three down and a lot more to go. Now, if you'd like to help as a translator, please send an email to outreach at mercynightchurch.org. And now that I think about it, even the audiobook version that we have is available for free. Also, we went ahead and put up a Telegram channel. The name to get to it is First Bible Network. We update stories there daily and uh, also update them at firstbiblenetwork.com. It has a chat room attached to it for discussions and comments. It's also where we post some of our popular FBN memes, those little uh, cartoons with a, a political agenda. And the new Presbyter Training Center is being built by the Marcionite Church in El Salvador. We had a breakthrough on the legal front there, so it's sailing along and by the grace of God is fully paid for. Bishop Theophilus says that what's needed most right now is your prayers that everything comes to fruition. Last but not least, the FBN Book of the Month is the First New Testament by Professor Jason Badoon. Now, I've read it, and if you want an academic deep dive into the original Bible and the events and people that surrounded it, I can't recommend this book enough. There's more footnotes than you can shake a stick at. Thanks for joining us, and just a reminder, you can listen to FBN 24-7 on our streaming radio station. Or catch us on Spotify, Apple, Google, Amazon, any of the big uh, video or podcast platforms. More likely than not, we have a presence there. I'm Darren Kalam, and we'll see you next time on First News on FBN. Kill them all, old and young, girls and women, and little children. Does that sound like something Jesus would ever say to you? The first Christians didn't think so either. And that's why you won't find the Old Testament in the first Christian Bible of 144 AD. Reconnect with your pre-Nicene Christian roots and the Bible you were meant to have. Ten books and the Gospel of the Lord. Download your free ebook at theveryfirstbible.org.